I have a confession to make. Our success in business is not just the result of our organic social media strategies. That's right, for over a decade now, my mom and myself have both used paid advertising to help grow our channels and our businesses. Sorry for being so dramatic. Hopefully this doesn't come as too much of a shock to anyone. You've probably seen some of the ads that we run already, so this probably wasn't a surprise, but it's something that we don't talk about that often. And it's something that we don't talk about, not because we're ashamed of using paid advertising, but just because admittedly, I'm not an expert when it comes to running ads on Facebook or Google or any other social network for that matter. And neither is my mom, Shaleen. We have learned a lot over the last few years. We've interviewed numerous experts. We've worked with agencies and different media buyers and ads managers, but it's not our expertise. It's not what we are best at. There are a lot of strategies that apply to organic social media marketing that also apply to paid advertising, but it's just not my forte. It's not my bread and butter. However, with all that being said, I recognize its power. I believe that for your brand or business to reach its highest potential, it requires not just organic social media, but also paid advertising. And that's why I'm really excited that in today's episode of Build Your Tribe, I'm sharing with you a conversation that I had with not one, but two ads experts, and not just one of their names is Steven, both of their names are Steven. Today, I am interviewing Steven Johnson and Steven Blackburn of Rich From Anywhere. And while you might think of the worlds of organic social media marketing and paid advertising as opposed to each other and clashing and constantly at war, it's actually a marriage that can be very beautiful. It's two strategies that can work together really well and that very much feed into each other. Of course, the majority of our episodes of Build Your Tribe are about creating good content and growing on Instagram and monetizing on TikTok and building an email list. A lot of those strategies, a lot of the best practices are going to apply to the conversation that I'm about to share with you. We're gonna talk about things like, where do you get started? Should you hire a coach or a manager or an entire agency? Or should you just do your advertising yourself? At what point should you get started? Like after you've made $10,000, after you have 10,000 followers, when do you start considering running ads? We're gonna talk about how advertising plays into your organic social media and how your organic social media can also help boost your ads. Speaking of boosting, we're also gonna talk about boosting and whether or not you should boost posts. Even if you only have $5 a day to spend on advertising, today's episode is for you. Steven and Steven are gonna help you get it figured out. They're gonna help you learn where to get started, what the right path forward is. And we're even gonna talk about what they're seeing as overarching trends, like what is working when it comes to ads right now versus what's less effective. And make sure you stick around to the end because they have one very exciting piece of news that I hadn't even considered myself that is going to be a serious game changer for running ads on Facebook and Meta and Instagram in the coming year. They have a extremely generous offer, something that I don't know if they've ever made before. So make sure to stick around to learn more about that free opportunity. I'm gonna quit my yapping. Here's the full interview. Hello, Steven and Steven. Welcome to Build Your Tribe. Brock, what's going on, brother? Nice to meet you, man. Good to be here. Yes, pleasure pleasure to meet you, and uh, thanks for having us. Of course, very excited to have you guys today to uh, talk about a topic that, as we were just talking about off-air, is so important, and it is something that we do in every area of our business. Every area of Team Johnson has some sort of paid advertising component, yet I recognize I'm not an ads expert. My mom is not an ads expert, um, and so I'm really excited to get to talk to you guys today because it is such a huge opportunity for our audience. And I think there's so much unknown for our listeners when it comes to running ads and where do you start and how do you start? And so let's just start there. You know, at what point should someone consider running ads, especially if they, let's say they've already gotten to the point where they have a product, whether it's an offer, a service, a digital good, they have something to sell. At what point do they consider running ads for that thing? For sure, man. So uh, I'll, I'll jump in first. So when it comes to running ads, uh, you have to understand your product. So what we like to do before we even start paying for ads, we like to focus on what is being what is able to do organically, mm -hmm. right? Because then it can tell us whether it's a proven product or or a non proven product. Now. Obviously, to do this, you have to have some sort of a tribe together in order to see if it works 
organically. Mm -hmm. But if you do not have have a tribe or you do not have have customers that have already bought from you in the past, then the best way to test it out is to actually start running some ads. And, you know, before you start running ads, you want to make sure that you have a lot of the back end stuff in place as well. But but just to answer your question, uh, you know, if you have a have a brand that does not have a tribe yet. Yes. Go ahead and run ads, because a lot of times that'll give you the advantage. Here's one thing about ads. Ads are kind of like, you know, back in the 90s when when Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa were out there just hitting a bunch of home runs and 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 just literally like taking the MLB by storm. And then we find out they're using performance enhancing drugs. <laughs> that's that's ads for you. Right. <laughs> it, gotcha. it, it'll, it'll level up everything that you do. Yeah. And to add on to that, too, I think if someone is lo like looking to like ask that question, hey, when I sh sh when should I start running ads? I think. It is the best if you already have a validated product, meaning like people are buying your stuff, right? You have a, mm -hmm. you have a little bit of momentum. You know something is actually selling. That's when it's time to start, you know, putting some gasoline on the fire. And and Facebook ads are like an incredible way to do that, man. Gotcha. Would you ever recommend running ads if not only do you not have like a tribe or the product isn't proven? Would you ever recommend running ads if they didn't even have a product yet? Like if they're still just trying to grow their audience and they don't really know what they're going to sell would there would there be a purpose for ads at that point I think you could still you could still do that um and that's the amazing thing about ads is you can you can gather such an incredible amount of data for mm. honestly really not that much money you know people come to us a lot and they're like man facebook ads are so expensive i can never like run ads that sounds like it's just going to tear a hole in my pocket but i'm telling mm. you right now it is not that expensive right when you run with the right strategy like we have students in our coaching programs that are spending less than $5 a day and collecting incredible information on stuff and just getting that information really, really quickly. That way you can let the data tell you which products are working, which hooks are working, what videos are working. Let the data tell you. I think that's actually a really big thing that people need to hear when it comes to building a business and figuring out what products to sell and all this kind of stuff. Never, ever, ever let your emotions dictate mm -hmm. what you sell right let the yeah. data tell you what to do and i think that's honestly yeah. why we've had so much success with ads and why our business is on an upward trajectory right now is because like the only thing that i know is that i don't know anything <laughs> right i just let the data yeah. tell me exactly what to do and and honestly it's never led us astray man so i think that you can you can definitely use ads if you want to figure out you know what product this is back in the day when we used to do e-commerce and we were doing drop shipping. This was like eight years ago. Mm -hmm. That was one of the biggest strategies was you had to find a winning product. And in the beginning, mm. you didn't know what a winning product was. So you had to test out with ads to figure out what that winning product was going to be. Um, so yeah, you can absolutely still do that. And you can do it with lead magnets. You can do it all types of stuff, man. Yeah. And that, that's honestly what I wanted to touch on. For those of you that don't have a product yet, but you kind of have an idea of what it is that you want to do the best thing that you should be doing is running ads to a lead magnet. Now, we talk about lead magnets real quick. A lead magnet is something that you give away a lot of times for free in exchange for someone's information. So when you're thinking about creating your lead magnet, for those of y'all listening, create something that pertains to what it is that you're going to be selling on the back end later. Give it away for free, right? Run ads to it. And start collecting those names, phone numbers, and emails. Because once you have that data and that information, now whenever you create your product or your service, it's a, it's a text blast or an email blast away from you getting an influx of sales because now you already have the customers ready to buy from you. So, so lead magnets are a great way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I second that. I mean, that's exactly what we do in our business. And that's also what we see working the best is when we're sending our ads or when we're using ads to send people to our lead magnets, our freemiums, or even our like lower expense offers, like our $7 trial, things like that. What we've seen, at least, and this could be, you know, I'm sure it varies industry to industry, product to product, ad to ad. But from what we've seen, as we start to advertise for our more expensive products or even our more expensive options of products, um, the ads get tougher. It gets tougher to find that client. The cost per conversion goes up and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I know you briefly mentioned, you know, the idea of budget. And you said some people in your coaching program 
are spending as little as like five dollars a day so can you talk to me more about budget and what people should realistically expect because i know that's got to be one of the biggest yeah. like you know stopping points that people have is like whoa i don't listen guys this sounds great but i don't have fifty thousand dollars to spend on ads yeah. what should you or what would you say to that person i always recommend when someone is new to running facebook ads that they start off with a pretty delicate budget right and when i say that i mean between five bucks and 15 bucks per day to start with right and the reason why we do that is because in the beginning you don't necessarily know what's going to work for you yet right you don't know what targeting is going to work for you. You don't know what videos are going to convert. You don't know what images are going to convert. You really have no idea. So anyone out here that's telling you that you have to go off the go out of the gate spending 500 bucks a day, $1,000 a day, and you don't even have any experience running Facebook ads, I honestly would not listen to them at all, right? <laughs> um, yeah. You don't have to do that. Now, if you are a super high level entrepreneur and 500 bucks a day is nothing to you, then yeah, you could test that and you're going to collect data and get the information very quickly. Right. So you can do that if you want to. But for anybody who's not necessarily at that level yet, don't feel like you need to spend hundreds of dollars a day. You can collect an incredible amount of information by spending 10 bucks a day. And then at that point, here's what you do. You start running these ads and what's going to happen is you're going to start running these ads and all of these numbers are going to start popping up in your Facebook ads manager. Right. And this is the crucial part these numbers that are popping up inside of your account are literally a language. It's literally a language that's telling mm -hmm. you exactly what's working and why it's working. It's showing you what's not working and why it's not working. So you can now start to make strategic decisions based off of what's making you money and what's not making you money. Right. And, and, and like with any language, if you don't understand the language, like bro, Brock, I could be giving you the key to life right now. Right. But if you don't, you don't speak my language, then you're going to be like, I don't understand what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the same thing with Facebook ads. If you don't speak the data language and you don't know what Facebook's trying to tell you, then you're going to be like most people who go into the ads manager and they're just like going all willy nilly, just running ads randomly, throwing, you know what, against the wall. And, and, and then mm -hmm. they turn into one of those people who say Facebook ads don't work. Mm. Well, it's not that Facebook ads don't work. It's, it's that you just don't know how to work them. You know? Exactly. So, Exactly. And while we're having this conversation about budget, I do want to preface that by saying, if you're boosting your posts, stop, stop it. boosting <laughs> your posts, right? Like, like we have a phrase that we, we like to say, boosting your posts is literally the devil. Okay. <laughs> it's the devil. And the reason why is because here's what Facebook does. They see that you created an organic post and it does pretty well. And then, and then they hit you with the little notification and they say, Hey Brock, you know, that post there that got 50,000 views, you could get, you could get 200,000 more if you just put $5 more to the budget. And they make it seem like it's like this really <laughs> easy mm -hmm. thing to do. Um, and a lot of people fall, fall into that trap and they simply just start running ads from their phone. Right. Mm. And, and that's one thing for your listeners. I want y'all to understand that you do not want to boost your post because when you boost your post, you do not have control the way that you think you have control. Like with us, we get really, we get really into the nitty gritty when we run our ads and we like to truly control our audiences and who we're targeting and the locations we're targeting. And we get really specific when we run our ads. But if you do it by boosting your post, it's very broad and it, it's mm. honestly not effective at, at all. And actually when we started running ads, <laughs> that's oh, what God. we did we started boosting our posts we spent yo you just, we gave, spent me, you just gave me instant, right you just gave me instant anxiety right when you said yeah. that bro <laughs> yo it, it it's so crazy and hard to talk about at the same time we spent about five thousand dollars on ads the wrong way mm -hmm. before we realized that we were doing it wrong and you know the reason why is because we were literally on youtube trying to figure out through the abyss of different techniques and in in conversations we were trying to figure out what worked mm -hmm. and we got led astray we got led led to to the wrong information and, and the re and here let me let me say this too one thing that the the greatest thinkers in the world have in common i'm talking about like uh steve jobs elon musk like the greatest thinkers in the world that have created billion dollar businesses you want to know the one thing that they have in common it's the fact that they have the ability 
to stop thinking, <laughs> which is crazy when you think about it. They literally mm -hmm. have the ability to shut off the thinking switch and go and execute, yeah. right? But a lot of times these, these entrepreneurs that are out here getting started, there's so many different strategies in their head and so many different techniques in their head and they start thinking too much. Mm -hmm. And when you start thinking too much, too much thinking leads to your ship sinking. And I see a lot of entrepreneurs out here who are thinking way too much and they have that analysis by paralysis or paralysis by analysis. Mm -hmm. And they're just looking at all these different ways to do things. And as a result, they do nothing at all. And it's very dangerous. So mm -hmm. I, I have to preface that because I want you to understand that there's a lot of people that, that teach this stuff. You mm -hmm. have to find the right people that are going to guide you and lead you to the promised land. Because there's a lot of BS out there too. Fact. So you have to yeah. make sure you're making the right decisions and then execute so on the it thing, as well. Though, right? Like we spent that five grand with Facebook ads, made zero sales, by the way, nothing. And it took us three months to make z zero sales, <laughs> right? <laughs> So we literally were like, okay, at three months, by the way, this is at a time where we were broke music artists, right? Anybody who looks into our story, like we were music artists, we were broke. We got into Facebook ads because we wanted to find a way to just fund our music career. That's it. So we were like, hey, let's run some ads. Let's start an e-commerce store. Let's watch some YouTube videos. And we did, spent five grand that we didn't have and just dug ourselves in a deeper hole. And then we we're like, okay, we made no sales. So at that point we were like, okay, uh, that didn't work. I'm not going to do that again. So let's find somebody who already has proven results, who already knows what they're doing. And let's just fit, see if they can help us. So luckily we found a guy who knew what he was doing and he had great track record. So we ended up just paying him to teach us. Now his mentorship was $5,000, right? Which is, which is crazy now, like looking back on it, how we spent five grand and then we had, and then we had to spend another five grand to have him <laughs> coach us. So yeah. now we're 10 grand in the hole because neither of us have money at this point. We're like broke, working two jobs that we hated, um, all types of situations going on, right? So we had a business credit card. We tapped out our credit card, just trying to learn this stuff. Um, this was honestly our last shot. I was like, dude, if this doesn't work, I'm going to be bartending for the rest of my life. Like, um, So this guy comes in, he looks at the way that we're running our ads and he's like, oh, well, no wonder you guys aren't making any sales, dude. Like, you're not doing anything right, right? Change this. Mm -hmm do this targeting, say this on your ad, switch these things up. We did it. I'll never forget this until ever. I'll never forget this because we made that change. We went home that night, launched the ad, and we ended up making a sale within eight hours. By the time we woke up in the morning, we had a sale on our phone. Wow. This was the moment that changed everything for me personally because, and it, and it wasn't because we were rich, right? Like, yeah, I think the sale yeah. that we made was like, was it fifteen dollars? It was like a yeah, it was like twelve ninety nine plus like, like six dollars shipping. Super cheap product. <laughs> that wasn't the that wasn't the thing. The thing that went off in my mind was, oh, someone that I didn't know, yep. saw an ad that I ran, went to my website and actually purchased with me. Like it was that epiphany moment that this actually does work, right? Mm -hmm. And so like we saw that dude. I busted into his room and I was like, bro. Put your space like spacesuit on because we about to take this thing to the moon, bro. Yeah, and I actually didn't yeah. say that. I didn't actually really say that, but I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. I I know the feeling that that first sale is is a game changer, and then when it's the first sale from ads, it's a game changer. It's I hear it from like every single entrepreneur I talk to. That first sale, even though it's usually like ten bucks or fifteen bucks, it's such a light bulb moment. It's such a yes. game changer. It's such a validation that this is possible. I loved what you said. Too much thinking leads to the ship sinking. That is very poetic, and uh, it makes sense with your guys' musical background. Um, but I, I couldn't agree more. And that's something that I'm always preaching: is you have to just take action. And you guys were talking about, you know, finding the right strategy or the right person to teach you the right strategy, and the way you find that right strategy or that right answer, quote unquote, is by taking action. Like, how mm -hmm. do you run 100 meters? Well, there are multiple ways that you could do it, and some are going to be faster or slower, but ultimately they're all going to be faster. Hopping on one leg backwards is going to be faster than sitting at the starting line and like thinking about, well, what would be the fastest? What would be the best way to do it? Maybe. So I love everything you guys are saying. I want to go back, though, um, to what you were talking about, talking about speaking about. the language, the language of ads. and. I remember when I first kind of stepped into the role of CEO of our business and it wasn't just 
me with my two person team. It was me with a large team. And I'm on these meetings and they're talking about things like ROAS and all these like fancy acronyms. And I don't want to get too lost in the sauce here, but can you talk to me a little bit more about the language? And when someone opens up their ads manager, what are some like things that they should be looking for, things that they should be caring about? So as you said, they're not just going in there willy nilly and pressing random buttons. Yeah, that's a great question, man. First of all, just to touch on what Brock just said, make sure you guys are running your ads from your ads manager, right? Like he just said, don't don't boost your post. It doesn't work. You want to run your from your ads manager. And by the way, all of you guys have access to an ads manager. It's free. It's just like the business, you know, so there's two sides to Facebook. There's a the front end side where like your profile picture and you talk with your friends and stuff. And then there's a back end of Facebook called the business manager. And you can literally get there by going to business.facebook.com. And you can set up your ads manager and that's where you run your ads from. All right. So, so then that's where you run your ads from. And then when you start running ads, all these numbers start popping up and that's the language that we're talking about. So here's the thing, guys, I don't want you to get overwhelmed because the thing is running ads is actually really easy. It's not complicated. The reason why most people think it's complicated, it's not because the, the subject matter is hard. It's because their studying method is wrong. Right, they're going and they're just watching eight hundred thousand YouTube videos, watching, learning from eight hundred thousand teachers, and wondering why they're confused. Like, of course you're Mm -hmm. confused. That's not the way that humans learn, right? You need to learn. One person needs to sit down with you and say, "Okay, look, boom. This is step one. Here's step two. Here's step three. Now do those three things. Come back. Let's look at the numbers and let's tweak from there. And if you do that repetitively, you are going to blow your business up. Period. But like. I say all that to say that there's a lot of metrics inside of Facebook, but you don't need to pay attention to all of them. There really is only a handful of metrics that are super, super important to you um, that you need to pay attention to. And I don't know how much, how many we can go in today, but I'll give you one for instance. You're, yeah, there's one yeah. In, in particular called what we call the CTR, right? CTR stands for click through rate, right? And, and a lot of people hear that and they're like, okay, click through rate. What does that even mean, right? Let me, basically all it is, is like what percentage of people who saw your ad clicked on it. And that's cool. That's a pretty analytical marketer definition, right? But what, what, give me that in like a layman's term. What does that mean in like plain English, right? Because that's what we like to do. We like to translate like all this data marketing lingo to like people who speak plain English, right? What a CTR is telling you, your CTR is telling you how well your video or your image is resonating with your audience. That's all it's doing. It's just a it's just a marker saying, hey, your CTR is really low. That means that people are not rocking with your video because they're just scrolling right past it and they're not clicking on it. But if you have a very high CTR, then that means people really are are resonating with your video or your image or whatever creative you're using because they're clicking on it at a high rate. Okay. Now The next thing you need to understand is that there are benchmarks for each one of these metrics. So for instance, if you're running a Facebook ad and you're trying to figure out, so for instance, like a benchmark for a CTR, right? What we like to keep it at is that 1% or higher. Okay. 1% or higher. And this is, this is the game changer because now you don't have to wonder if your video is working good or not. You don't have to use your opinion or emotion. You use data. If it's less than 1%, then what that tells you is that your video or your image is not resonating with your audience very, very much. And you need to switch out your creative, try something different. Now, if it's at 1% or higher, then typically that means that people are, they're resonating with your creative and that's not the issue. So you're like, okay, cool. So if your ad's not working, then okay, my CTR is above 1%. That in the, the video is not the problem. Let's move on to the next metric and let's and let's di- try to diagnose it elsewhere. Does that make sense, though? Yeah, yeah, I think that does. So if I'm if I'm tracking, if like let's say my click through rate is like two point two percent, I can then assume okay, the video, the ad, the photo, whatever it, the actual content is, that's doing its job in terms of getting people's attention, getting them to actually click. But then maybe once they click, they go to a sales page and then 
something on the sales page isn't working. Maybe there's like copy on the sales page that isn't converting someone, or maybe they go to the sales page, but the link is broken or they go to the sales page Mm -hmm. and then they go to another checkout page and then they go to a fourth page. And then there's like 17 more pages before they ever even become a customer. So basically what you're saying is at least we then we can whittle down to find what the actual problem is rather than trying to fix a hundred different things at once. Yes. 100%. And reading metrics, essentially the reason why you have to understand how to read the data and understand the language is because of what you just said. It helps you to identify specific bottlenecks within your flow, right? Because here's what most people do. Most people will run an ad one time right they'll hit the publish button one time and that's it's very easy to just hit publish one time and just hope and cross your fingers and hope that you get some sales but that's where most people stop is right there Mm -hmm. and the reason why they stop is simply because they don't understand what and what just happened they don't understand anything so if, if the ad is successful and they got a few sales they're like okay cool i guess i'm gonna keep it running i don't know but i guess But then there's the other side. If you're running the ad and you don't get sales, then you just cut it off. And if you don't know how to read the data, then at that point, you're you're literally stuck. So that's why when you don't get sales, you have to look at these metrics because it helps you to essentially diagnose your ad. We're like the ad doctors. Mm -hmm. And for those of y'all watching right now, think about your think about your brand and how you run ads as you being the doctor, the ad doctor. So when you go into your ad account and you start looking at these metrics, Every single metric speaks to a certain thing that you're doing in your business correctly or incorrectly. That's that's literally it. So if you can understand the metrics, honestly, the top marketers in the world, that's what they're doing and that's why they're successful. Right. It's all about the metrics. But here's the thing, like agencies, marketing agencies will literally charge you 5,000 bucks, 10,000, $20,000 a month in retainers to do what it is that we're telling you to do right now, right? And I'm not, I'm not, again, not saying that agencies are all bad, but a lot Mm -hmm. of agencies are not really getting people really great results. And a lot of them are even very doing some crazy stuff. And I'm not even going to talk about like stealing your (laughs) pixel data and all types of wild stuff. Crazy. But literally, if you learn the skills that we're telling you right now, you're learning the skills that agencies charge you 5,000 a month for. So now all Mm -hmm. of a sudden you don't have to hire an agency for 5k a month. You can keep yeah. that money and put it towards your own ad spend or like a lot of our high level entrepreneurs who are very busy, they like, they like to actually just train an in-house team, right? Maybe it's your wife or your husband or, or your, your son or your daughter or a cousin, somebody that you trust mm-hmm. who actually has the, your, best, your best interest at heart, right? Because at the end of the day, agencies don't really care about your, your company, your business, right? They're going to do the bare minimum just to not get fired. Just saying. Yeah. And, and the agencies don't like us, by the way. So I'm okay with saying this, right? Agencies <laughs> yeah. need us because we teach yeah. people how to not need agencies. You, you know, what's really funny is, so we were on uh, Ryan Pineda's podcast and I don't know if you know Ryan, but he's mm-hmm. a, you know, multiple seven figure entrepreneur. He's big in real estate. And for the longest time, he was going out outsourcing, hiring agencies. Mm-hmm. Then he decided to bring it in house. He was like, you know what? The agencies are, are cool, but let me go ahead and bring it in-house. And mm-hmm. as soon as he brought it in-house, he realized that he was making more money, more return on ad spend doing it in-house than actually outsourcing to an agency. So so the results are twofold because no longer do you have to spend money 5K, 10K a month on an agency. So mm-hmm. now you're saving that 10K. But now you can use those 10Ks toward that, that 10K towards ads and yep. not have to pay an agency. So you're really saving money. I guess it really comes down to what it is that you want to do in your business. If you're an on-the-go entrepreneur and you simply just don't have time to run ads, then maybe an agency is the thing. But even if you consider an agency, you should also consider hiring a team member that you can train up on ads so that at least That's everything right. is in-house. You know, so yep. I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I a thousand percent agree. And that's personally what we've done as well. We've had years of having this agency and that agency, and we're with an agency for five or six months. And then the, uh, the results start slowly diminishing and we start seeing that, you know, they're adding more people into their agency and they're not yep. really giving us, you know, tr- the right treatment anymore, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and then 
we eventually part ways, we hire a new agency, and it's kind of like a repeat of this process. Eventually, now we have brought a lot of our advertising in-house as well um, for just that that control piece. But I love also what you're saying about learning the skills first. And I think that that's true in pretty much every area um, of entrepreneurship and business. It's going to benefit you to learn to do it yourself first, maybe not master it, but at least learn the basics so that if nothing else, you know what to look for. Mm. You can hire someone and you know what to hire. You can hire an agency or a person or whatever, and you know what to look for. Um, I think that's I think that's absolutely huge. And that's true social in organic content as well. I think a mm -hmm. lot of people are like, well, hey, I don't like making content. It's not my thing. So I'm going to hire an agency to do it for me. But then you don't know why the agency is or is not working. Exactly. And there's a million other problems that could come with that as yeah. well. Um, but speaking of content, obviously, the ad that you're running is basically a form of content, right? Whether it's a photo or an infographic or a video or text or whatever, it is content. So does making a good ad essentially boil down to being able to make good content? Um, Absolutely, 100%. And this is where our two worlds collide, Brock, is because you're big when it comes to organic content and creating content that actually converts and, and all of these things. So if you take Brock's strategy of creating effective organic content and, and making money that way, you can see amazing strides. Let's say you post for 30 days straight, or let's say you post every other day for 30 days. This is where our two strategies really align. Look back over those past 30 days inside of your Instagram or your Facebook or your TikTok, wherever you're creating the content. And start looking and seeing which particular pieces of content perform the best, which mm -hmm. one got the most comments, which one got the most shares and likes and, and things like that. Then what you want to do is you want to take that visual and you want to run ads to it. Because if it did well organically, there's a really good chance that it'll do well inside of the ads as That's well. Exactly. And I, I, I love the marriage between organic and paid ads. I truly believe that you should be doing both of these things because that strategy right there that, that I just gave y'all is gold. Yeah. If you can tap into it's, it. It's a killer combination. Like the, the organic with the paid together is, is a killer combination. And my little quick tip for you guys, when you're running ads, definitely you're probably going to want to prioritize video over images. Now I will say split test mm -hmm. though. You want to split test, right? Because again, the only thing I don't know, the only thing I know is that I don't know anything at all. And I'm going to mm -hmm. split test and let the data tell me. But what we found in the the accounts that we're running, and we're running ads for some of the biggest names in the game on the back end, and we've been doing so for a while. And video always tends to outperform the images, right? And it's kind of mm -hmm. simple to think about when you when you really think about it. Like you know what they say about an image is worth a thousand words, right? Mm -hmm. Well, a video is worth a thousand images. Right. So you're getting way more information and way more context in a short amount of time. And plus, we just mm -hmm. live in a very video centric world. So videos are going to tend to perform. But the other thing that the reason why organic and paid work so well is because sometimes people will see your organic stuff and they'll come to your website and they'll check you out. But then what happens? Mm -hmm. The doorbell rings. <laughs> the baby starts crying. The dark, the dog yeah. barks, whatever it is. And then they leave your website. Right. And actually, for those of you who don't know, like uh, most websites, it, like a, a standard conversion rate is about 3%. Right. It's about 3%, 5% if you're like a rock star. Right. So, what that means is if 100 people hit your website, your goal is to get three of those people to convert. Yeah. Isn't that crazy to think about? Like, yeah. So, when you flip that upside down, that means that 97% of people who hit your website, even if you have a, a great website, are going to leave. And we've done a mm -hmm. lot of research on this. We've dug into this particular topic. And a lot of times people are not leaving because they're not interested in your stuff. They're leaving because they got distracted by something, right? Because we live in this world of just like a million distractions, right? Even for me, like I go on a website, I leave that website, bro. I forgot I was on the website five minutes later, right? I'm off doing something completely different. So this is when we implement something called retargeting ads. And retargeting ads are your most profitable form of marketing online, period, point blank. There are no debates, right? Because it's it's the digital form of following up with people. And you know what they say about the follow-up? The fortune is in the follow-up, right? 
So what <laughs> happens is these people, they come to your site, they saw one of your organic posts that was amazing. They check your website out. They're like, hmm, and then ding dong, and then they go off, right? And then like later that night, they're chilling on the couch, scrolling through Instagram like everyone does, and one of your ads pop up and say, hey, what happened? You were checking on our website. What happened? You'd like go complete your order now or go book your call now. And then they're like, oh yeah, that's right. I completely forgot about that. I was, I, I meant to do that. Let me go ahead and do that now, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine if you guys don't have retargeting ads set up right now, you are literally leaving thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars on a month on the table every month by not retargeting people because they want your stuff. They just have to be reminded. That's it. And retargeting is a, is a, is an amazing way to do it. And it's, and it's really, again, it's all easy to do. It's not hard. You set a retargeting ad up and you launch it and you let it run and it's just going 24 seven. It's like the best assistant ever, right? Who doesn't yeah, complain, and, doesn't take off days. <laughs> yo, it, exactly. And if you go to our Instagram average from anywhere, you better believe you're going to be you retargeted, retargeted a lot. And, and, and one thing I want to mention we practice too, what we preach over here. <laughs> no, we do. We do. And I, I do want to mention this too, for those of y'all that are just going out here and simply thinking you could just pop up an ad and it, it goes crazy. One thing you have to do first is you have to make sure that you have the Facebook pixel connected to your website. Mm, yeah. That is a must. That's a big part. And I know a lot of people listening might not know what the Facebook pixel is. So I'm just going to break it down for you really quickly. The pixel is this little itty bitty piece of code that you put on your website. And I know a lot of times when you hear the word code, it's like a, it's like a danger word. It's, it's like, yo, code, that's intimidating. But Facebook makes it really easy, I promise you, to install this pixel onto your website. Now, what the pixel does is the pixel tracks the actions that people perform on your website. So for instance, let's say that you're driving people to, um, to, to your website and they come to your website and then they visit the product page, then they add a product to cart, and then they purchase. Those are literally four different events that a person has done on your website. The pixel tracks all of those events, which is, which is awesome. So now the pixel communicates back to Facebook and literally stores that person inside of Facebook. Now what gets even funner is that you can use the pixel to create something called a custom audience, okay? A custom audience is a segmented group of people that have performed a specific action on your website. So for instance, let's say that you drive a thousand people to your website and a hundred of them add a product to the cart. You can tell Facebook, hey Facebook, you know those hundred people that added a product to my cart? I wanna go ahead and segment those particular people into their own little community of people or into their own little box. So now what you've done is you've created what's called a custom audience of just those 100 people. So let's just say this. Let's say you create a custom audience based off of anyone that's purchased from you. Let's say you've gotten 1,000 purchases over time. Would you say that those 1,000 people all have something similar? They love your brand. They have enough money to pay for your product. They're all about Brock Johnson, right? All 1,000 of those people. <laughs> So you can go to Facebook and say, yo, Facebook, you know those thousand people that bought from me? I want you to create a custom audience of those people. And then what I want you to do is take those people and create what's called a lookalike audience. And this is when it gets really fun because essentially a lookalike audience is where you take the custom audience of people and you tell Facebook to create more people that are exactly the same as the people that have already bought from you. So now check this out though, because Facebook is really good. Facebook will create the lookalike audience for you, but it's not going to be just a thousand people based off of the people that bought from you. It's literally going to be 2.7 million new people that are exactly the same as the people inside of your custom audience. So you take that lookalike audience and you start running ads to just th those particular people. That's when it goes really crazy. That's, that's when you start having record months after months after months is when you can really utilize Facebook the way it's designed to be used. Because again, mm -hmm. we've been talking about this all show. Yeah. Facebook ads are very easy. It is not difficult like, to do. I know somebody's over here listening like, yeah, but like, how do we know that 
that lookalike audience is actually accurate, right? How do we know that these people actually do look like these people who've already purchased? And this is mm -hmm. where Facebook, I think, has has the has the the trophy on all other ad platforms, right? Facebook has 52,000 data points on every single profile on Facebook. 52,000. I want you guys to think about that for a second. Like, like if you asked me to name 52 things about myself, it would take me a long time. 52 things. Face, Facebook's over here knowing 52,000 things. So like when we say Facebook knows more about you than you know about you, like it's the truth. They, they really do. And, um, and by the way, a data point is something like, you know, what type of videos you like to watch? What type of videos you click on? What time in the morning do you typically open up your Facebook or Instagram app, right? All mm -hmm. these things. They even scrape data off of Facebook on websites that you're looking at. They're listening mm -hmm. to your conversations. Dude, they got everything, okay? Yeah. They know everything yeah. about you. And from a consumer standpoint, it is terrifying. But if you're watching this vi video, you are a business owner. And from a business standpoint, this is gold. This is where things get crazy. So, so that's the reason why when we, when we take an audience of people who purchase with you and you plug it into Facebook and say, hey, Facebook, go find me millions of people that look just like these people, but they're different people. Trust me when I say it is extremely terrifyingly accurate um, and your business is going to go crazy. That gym that you just dropped, like that's, that was enough right there like <laughs> that was enough bro. That's, that's the bar the bar right yeah. there yeah. You, you guys have been dropping lots and lots of gems and honestly i mean maybe maybe i'm in the minority with this i know you said from the consumer standpoint it's terrifying i think it's definitely crazy that they have fifty two thousand data points on me personally i'm like take as many as you need because if i'm going to get an ad that is perfect for me i'd much rather see an ad that i'm like oh my gosh Yes. Like I've, I've been wanting this my whole life. Thank you, Facebook, for showing this to me rather than some random like, you know, product that I have yes. no interest in at all. But maybe, maybe that's just me. What I was going to say was I want to mention this, too, because you're big with Instagram growth. You know, TikTok is reportedly possibly more than likely about to get banned. Yeah. Right? Um, I was reading a stat the other day, and this is going to make you excited. And this is going to make a lot of people that want to advertise on Facebook very excited. If TikTok does get banned, 55% of the users on TikTok are going to come to Facebook and Instagram, which number one means more eyeballs on Instagram for your organic content. But more importantly, 55% of those eyeballs of those billions of people are coming to Facebook, which means those data points that Facebook's going to get on them are going to be extremely accurate. And my prediction is if this does happen, that Facebook ads are going to be even stronger because of it. So I just agree. wanted to point that out. And and, yeah. and going back to what you were saying earlier about um, like targeting the right people at the right time with the right stuff. This is where like the debate of like Google ads versus Facebook ads is always like a pretty big debate, right? Which one's mm -hmm. better, right? They both work. Google ads for us has always been way more expensive and we've gotten mm -hmm. way higher cost per result. With, with Google ads. Mm -hmm. So we tend to do Facebook um, way more. Plus Facebook has way more data on its users than Google does. Um, it's, it's crazy. Um, but the mm -hmm. other thing, the reason why we love Facebook ads so much and Instagram ads is because we call it interruption marketing, right? Because what we're doing with Facebook ads is we're interrupting people's daily habits and they're just scrolling mm -hmm. on Facebook and then here we come, boom, interrupting them with some ad. And the reason why this is so powerful is because Yes, people out here, they have problems and your, your business solves those problems, right? But the thing is, if sometimes people have problems and they don't necessarily know what the solution is for that problem. So yeah. if Google ads is more search-based, how are people going to go off and search for something that they don't even know exists? Very true. Right? And that, and that yeah. is a lot of times in business or in life when we have a problem, sometimes we know what the solution is and we just need to go search for it. But sometimes we have problems and we have no idea what the solution is. So how are we going to search for something that we don't know exists? And that's why Facebook ads are also very important for finding uh, your customers that are looking for your stuff. They're praying for your stuff. They just don't know that you're there, right? And I'm telling you right now, there are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of people out there that would love to buy your stuff right now if they just knew that you existed. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And and to even add on to everything you guys are saying, first of all, 
I love the stat. Yeah, you said 55 million coming from TikTok to Facebook and Instagram, or was it 55%? 55%. Okay, 55%. So that's massive. Like that is a that's probably over a hundred million because I think there's like two hundred million Americans or three hundred two hundred million Americans who are on TikTok, something like that, or 150. So anyways, it's a huge number. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. I'm I'm looking forward to that. I on a personal note, hope TikTok doesn't get banned. But on a uh, business note, if if it's going to benefit my Facebook ads that much, uh, maybe maybe I am in favor of it. Um, but also, if that happens in like January or whenever that's supposedly going to happen, that's also post election cycle, which I know is something we haven't even talked about today. Um, and I know it might be something that people listening haven't even considered. But I also am aware that like, election years are heavy for political advertising. And so it often means that like businesses who are advertising during the, you know, the next few months as we run up to this upcoming U.S. election um, have basically more competition. Is that accurate or is that just kind of a outdated way of thinking of mine? No, actually, you're right. And what you're referring to is uh, the CPM which is your cost per 1,000 impressions. Because, mm -hmm. and the reason why that's accurate, Brock, is because the way that Facebook ads work is it's an auction process, right? So the cost of your ads is all dependent on who's in the auction. So for I'm gonna use this as an example. Let's say mm -hmm. that you go to an auction and there's five people in the, in the room with you, mm -hmm. auctioning for, for a particular item, right? I know that if I'm going to an auction with just five people in it, I'm probably not going to have to pull out the big bucks to win that auction because there's not as much competition. Yeah. But then if I go to an auction and there's thousands of people inside of this auction, I know I better bring my checkbook because I'm going to have to bid a lot higher to outbid everybody else. Yeah. That's the same way that ads work. Ads are an auction process. So when you're running your ads, if you notice that your CPM or your cost goes higher, all that means is that there's a lot of people that are inside of the auction running ads to the same audiences that you're targeting as well. And Facebook does what's called automatic bidding. So they pretty much bid on your behalf. And the reason why a lot of people love automatic bidding is because Facebook will never go crazier than the amount of daily budget that you have. So they're, they're, they're bidding on your behalf and it's pretty reasonable. But sometimes you'll see that your CPMs are $70, $80, and that's an extremely high cost to pay for a thousand impressions it's it, it's extremely high so we want to keep our cpms um lower but that the, to your point yes that's exactly what happens and not necessarily not just during election season but it also happens during the holiday season when people are, when all these advertisers know that this is the time when people are spending the most money they're literally throwing money at everything right You'll, you'll notice that your cost, the cost of your ads will be more expensive during those times simply because everybody's advertising um, at that time. So to your point, that's a great observation. That's exactly correct, man. Like and anytime there's an influx of businesses running ads, um, you're going to see your CPM get a little bit higher. Gotcha. All right. That makes sense. Um, before we go, I'd love for each of you to just give one last word of advice, one last tip, one last bar, um, something to share with my audience. Stage is yours. What I'll say is this. In order to, to truly be successful, you have to understand this particular concept. And it's very true. There's been scientific studies on this thing, right? If you hang around people that have a very low expectation of you, you will fall to those standards every single time. But if you hang around people that have a very high expectation or a high demand of you, you will rise to those standards every single time. And it's really interesting if you, if you're in the, I don't know if you're in the sports, Brock, but if you look at how records are set, it's really interesting. Cause if you look back to the sixties or the seventies, uh, you know, NBA, for instance, like there, there, there were scoring champions back then. And there were people that, that scored thousands and thousands of points. But then if we look at things today, all those records have been broken. The reason why records are broken is because the previous generation didn't have a high enough threshold to aim for. And us as human beings, we are, we, we are very goal oriented. And if we see something done, then we can try to top it and we can, we can wrap, wrap our mind around it, right? 
So back then in the 60s, they didn't have the high goals or high standards to aim for. So their goals are, and their standards were a lot lower. But somebody like LeBron James, who's the leading scorer in NBA history, I will argue that the reason why he is so successful and he is as amazing as he is, is because he had very high standards and very high accolades to aim for. He was aiming for Jordan and Jordan had specific stats in these things that he was aiming for. So it's a lot easier for you to break records within your business if you have very high standards for what it is that you're trying to accomplish. I love it. I love it. Couldn't agree more. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. We'll link everything up in the show notes down below. Appreciate you guys. Again, thank you so much for listening today. At Rich From Anywhere is linked up down in the show notes below this episode. Make sure to send them a direct message on Instagram with the word Rich24, R-I-C-H, the number two and the number four. Make sure to just get started. That's my final piece of advice. That's my final recommendation. Just like anything else, to go all the way back to my analogy about running a 100-meter dash, sure, the fastest, most efficient way to run it might be the way Usain Bolt does it. It might be, you know, with proper running technique and running in a straight line. But ultimately, even if you're crawling backwards doing a crab walk on your butt, you're going to be moving faster and you're going to be moving forward towards that goal, towards the finish line, way more efficiently and way faster than someone who's sitting at the starting blocks thinking about what's the best way to move forward. So I want to encourage you to take action and I want to encourage you, no matter what stage you're at in business or growing your brand online, to consider incorporating paid advertising into your overall strategy. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next week. And as always, happy networking. Yeah.